Hey, this is Ant bringing you an Unreal Engine tutorial. So in this video we'll be picking up from part 1 where we created a coin picker and what we'll be doing is when this coin is being picked up we'll be storing this value by using the player controller. So without further ado, let's go into it now. So we have the coin, if we hit play, just to recap, we're able to pick the coins up and they get destroyed. but we don't know basically how this coin is being stored or where the uh, value is because it's not been created yet. So in this video I've decided to basically use a player controller. It's portable with the, the actual player and if the character gets destroyed the, the score won't be lost either. So just a consideration for you guys to take into mind if you ever have to possess other characters or if you're using multiple characters for whatever reason. So, I already have a BP Pickup controller. Um, if you download the project files in the link below, you'll get a copy of that. If you're following on, on your own projects, all you need to do is right-click, go to Blueprint Class, and then select uh, Player Controller for the options here. So, let's get into the Player Controller then. Well. Inside of here, I've got something that uh, helps basically regulates the health bar and sets up the health widget. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some new logic now that will detect when coins are picked up. So I'm just disconnecting them, begin play for now. So how do we get all the coins in the world? Well, we know that there's currently four. So what I can do is I can use a node called get all actors of class and I can choose my BP coin. So if I put in the search, BP coin, hit compile. Now when event, event begin play happens, it'll basically grab all of those and it'll generate an array for it. Next thing I need to do is, well, it's generating an array. How do we go through that? I'll drag out from out actors and we want for each loop. Connect that to get actors of a class. So, okay, we're looping through them. It'll go through all four of them and it'll grab the each element in sequence. So how do we basically pick up that it's been picked up? Well, to keep it simple, we have to subscribe to the event dispatcher here, which is basically saying that the coin is being picked up and being called when that event happens. What we can do in our player control is we can subscribe to that event. So, drag from array element, type in bind event to on coin picked up. Connect that. Now, if you hit compile, it's going to generate an error because basically, well, we're binding to it, but there's nothing that we're actually binding it with. So what we need to do is drag from the red event node. I want to create an event. Next, select function, create a matching event, and I'm going to call this coin picked up. Just going to drag it back up here so it's nice you know it's near to the actual create events hit compile and the horrible uh, red message will go away so what do we need next then well ideally we need to basically store this coin in a variable so easiest thing to do would be to create an integer so on the variables panel on the left i'm going to add a new variable I'm going to change the variable type to integer and I'm going to call that coin total. Hit compile save. So next thing I need to do is I can drag this into the graph. If you hold control and release you'll get a get node. If you drag into the graph with alt and let go you'll get a set node. So just a useful shortcut for you to remember. So, the coin's been picked up. Well, what I want to do is I want to increment the total. So, if you'd put a plus plus, go to integer, and this will increment the total every time a coin's picked up. 
So to demo that, I'm just going to put a print string. I'm going to drag it into here. And then whenever a coin's picked up, it should uh, print out a value, which is just the, the current total or the current coin total. Before we test, if you're not using, if you haven't made a player controller, make sure that whatever game mode you've assigned to the map is using it. In my case, this will be BP pickup controller. Otherwise, you won't see any print strings. Hit play, and let's give that a test. Okay, as you can see, it's printing string, three, four. So we can tell that that's working, and it's actually it's picking up the coins are being picked up. So okay, we know that. We've got a health bar, and we know that uh, we're picking up coins, but at the moment there's no actual representation for it. So I'm just going to quickly go into WBP health bar. Now I've already created a template, which is just a horizontal box with um, text to say coins picked up and text to say zero. But what I want to do is I want to create a binding for this so that when the coins are picked up, it will update that amount. So to do that, go to the text block, go to the content text, and I want to create a binding. Create binding, and it should display this function in here. So I want to get the player controller. I'm going to do a cast to BP pickup controller. And I want to get the coin total. Plug that into here. It will can do the conversion to from an integer to text. But the other thing I want to do is I want to make sure that for whatever reason, if this cast fails, that value will always be zero. Or I could just put null. I'll put null. It uh, definitely lets you know that something's gone wrong with this then. Uh, the text. I'm just going to get get coin total instead. That way, it's just a bit tidy in your graph. You can understand what things are doing. Let's give that a test. Okay, the health voice disappeared. Let's see what's going on with that. Um, I basically I hooked up all the logic for this. I didn't actually connect the logic to make the bar appear on the screen. So a little silly mistake, but thankfully it wasn't too dramatic. There we go. Hit compile, hit play. There we go. So it's appeared on the screen. Now then, fingers crossed, when I pick up a coin, it's updating the total. So that brings us to the end of part two. So in the next one, I will be going over how to create another uh, actor, which is going to be a door. Now, there's a reason for this. The door will initially open automatically, but in a later part, we'll be using coins to basically open the door. So it'll have a cost to open. I'll see you in the next part, guys.